Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Extreme Flyways. Now we're talking about the art of duck calling. When to call, when not to call, who sounds good, who sounds bad. You might get offended, but don't take it personal because we're going extreme. <laughs> Being a good duck caller is important, but it takes a lot of practice. You can't just go buy a call, put it to your mouth, listen to a tape, and expect to be an expert the same day. It takes, over time, lots of practice. I'm going to tell you a little story. Back when I was younger, I was working down at the steel mill, I used to keep myself awake in the mornings driving home when I was off a midnight shift. I'd blow that duck call from Blyville all the way to Matthews. That's what kept me awake, and I practiced that every day. Back when I first started duck hunting, there wasn't a whole lot of people that duck hunted, and you got invited, buddy. You didn't want to call, because if you did and you didn't know how, they'd leave your butt at home. You weren't invited next time. I remember growing up in the rice fields and flooded timber of Arkansas with old men who were exceptional duck callers. They didn't have the calls that we have today, the acrylic and the coca bola wood. They had pretty much homemade duck calls that either they made for themselves or their friends made it. And I can tell you, if you walked in that blind and you pulled out a duck call and you sounded terrible, you was probably going to get a boat paddle upside your head. It took me six years to learn how to blow a duck call, so don't get discouraged. The number one thing that you're going to have to do after you learn how to blow a duck call is to be able to read the ducks. When to blow, what call, at what time. That is very crucial. You cannot have a duck at 20 yards blowing a hail call. Now, we're sitting in a duck blind today in a hunting scenario. Now, obviously, we're not hunting or I wouldn't be wearing a blue cap. However, preseason here, I want to show you a little bit how we call ducks. So let's say that the ducks are way out there and nothing's close here. Or I'm not worried about blowing anything out of the hole. So I got to have a good call in order to reach their ears. And what that call is, is a highball. How do I make that highball sound? Well, it starts with a simple quack. Now, to quack in your duck call, you want to say the word quack or hoot in your call, like this. Now, once you master the quack, that is the base for every call that you will make from now on. The highball is a lot of pressure in the barrel of the call. I place my hand over the call like this in order to trap the pressure to make the sound that I want to make. The highball goes like this. Now what I'm saying is quack, 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 quack. Or in humans terms, hey, I'm over here. All I'm doing is getting their attention. An important thing to remember is to always bring it out of your chest, your, out of your diaphragm when you're, when you're calling ducks. You want to kind of when you're coughing or something like that. Same difference. Bring it up out of your diaphragm. You know, bring a deep, ooh, 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 you know, to kind of grunt and just bring a real deep grunt. I'm going to do a chuckle call. How do I chuckle? Well, when I place the call to my mouth and I have my hand over the barrel, I say chug, 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 or tig, 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 tig. In this call, what that is is it's sounding like ducks that are feeding below, like this. <laughs> Now notice when I open my hand, the sound gets different, and when I close it, it gets different. And after I've done that and I've got their attention, they're kind of starting to drop, I'm going to give them a comeback call, which goes a little bit like this. trying to blow a duck call, you got to ask yourself, are you a competition caller or are you a meat hunter? I'm a meat hunter. I'm not going to sit out there and scream at them ducks. It's like your mother trying to wake you up in the morning. Get out of bed! Them ducks don't want to hear that, and I don't either. Larry's over there blowing my daggone ear out. I'm going to tell him to shut up as quick as I can. Now, there's a lot of people who believe in a lot of things. 
and you see these guys walking around with their lanyards with tons of bands around them. And they ought to be proud of that. I mean, to kill a band is a very special experience. But I'm a hardcore duck hunter. And yes, I've killed quite a few bands. However, I don't like metal wrapped around the lanyard of my call. Why is that? I do a lot of moving in the duck blind when I'm calling. I'm watching birds. And if you'll notice and listen with guys who have a lot of bands around their lanyards, all you hear is cling, 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 quack, cling, 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 quack. Cling, 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 quack. Well, listen, quack is the only thing I'm interested because cling, cling ain't ever killed a bird. It was he call it cling, cling? Well, I got this saying from my ex-wife. I call it bling, bling. All right, another type of call that we like to use is called the comeback call. Now, what is this? The birds have came over the hole. They've, they've circled a few times, and now they may be a little bit nervous, so they're starting to take off. So what I want to do is I want to get their attention, but in humans' terms, I want to say, hey, get your ass back over here. And this is the call that I'd make. When you're out there calling, don't sound like a broken record. Change it up a little bit. Put a little wine in that call. You'd be surprised what it does. Man, I've had them things be flying dead dead away, turn on a dime, and, and, and be in your face before you can pick your gun up. That is very crucial. You cannot have a duck at 20 yards blowing a hail call. And all that's going to take is time in the field. It takes practice, takes mistakes. Don't give up. You'll get there. Now, we're not saying we're the greatest duck callers in the world, but we have over 40 years of experience duck hunting from Arkansas all the way up to Canada. And what we've done is we've just mastered our own sound when we hunt, which is what you got to do. Practice, practice, practice. That's what's making perfect. But I'll tell you, the best duck callers aren't the guys who know how to blow these calls. It's the guys who know when not to blow these calls. What do I mean by that? When ducks are close, you're too loud. They're not going to come in. When ducks are far away and you're not getting their attention, they're going to never know you're there. You've got to find that fine medium, that line that crosses to where they understand what you're saying out of the barrel of your call in order to get them into your decoys, landing gear out to where your gun barrel is pointed at their head. Man, do you ever think that something like this caused you to get your tail whooped in the duck blind? Me either. Listen, I want you to join us next week as we talk about motion decoys and how to make your spread come alive this season. Until we see you again, remember, this is Extreme Flyway. Mm.